I got to spend some quality time with my narcissistic father before he died. We got together, he poured a glass of whiskey, we had a cigar because he enjoys these things and I enjoyed this moment with him. But it was during this quality time that my dad shared something with me that I would call the narcissist's last words before dying. What he had to share with me would help me to better understand the narcissist's experience in this life, at least my narcissistic father's experience in this life. More importantly, it's helped me to gain a better understanding of what's important for me in this life. And that's what I want to share with you. My name is Kevin and this is The Royal We. Before I continue, I want to let you know that I'm here to support you. Down in the description box, you'll find access for one-on-one -on -one appointments with me. In addition to that, I have a brand new life coaching program where I teach every day, Monday through Friday, live with questions and answers. It's only $49 for the entire month. You cannot afford to miss out on this. Head on down there and get registered. This week in class, we're talking about defeating that feeling of being alone. So for those of you who struggle to feel alone, get registered and join us this week. Now, I'm talking about the last words before narcissists die, which is also a way to summarize how the narcissist really sees their experience in life. And it also helps us to understand what's important in this life. Now, in order to tell this story properly, I'm going to have to take you on a journey with me so you can understand my father, at least the way that I understand my father from the beginning. So let's look at some pictures. It's picture time going way, way back to before I was born. This is a picture of my mother and father on their wedding day. Two hippies somewhere in the early 70s. I'm not exactly sure when, but this is them. And it looks like they're really genuinely happy. I think, I mean, it's, it's hard to tell. I believe that they were happy in this moment. And that's what I see. I see a couple who is very happy in this moment. And for obvious reasons, I mean, number one, my dad should have been happy because my mom was beautiful. Even though this, this picture is from the seventies, I could see that twinkle in her eye. And what's interesting about this is that I never got to see my mother look like that as I was growing up. When I look back at this picture, it's like I'm seeing a different woman. Everything seemed to be going really good. My dad seemed to be happy. The only one picture that I think is questionable looking back is this one of my dad's back turned and my mom has this look in her eyes like, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> like, I that look is, that's, that's the only picture where there's not a smile, there's just this deep stare off into, oh no, it's real now, right? That's, that's kind of what I see here. But nonetheless, one last picture of their wedding, uh, them going off in their shag and wagon, whatever that thing is, I don't know, their, their honeymoon mobile with the flowers on it, just married, and they're peeking out through the back window, and it looks like they're just having a good time. They're making, they're making the most of it you would think that they had a great start to what could be a great life together, to a great love. And if that wasn't enough, if that wasn't enough for my father, having a beautiful woman and a wedding that was incredible, if that wasn't enough, well, then I was born. And look at that. Look at that right there. Now, if that doesn't make y'all swoon, I don't know what will, right? Sometime after my dad and mom were married, I was born. And yeah, that's me, drooly faced and everything. I, I, I was a ball of joy, I'm sure of it. And there's pictures that I have of my dad and me, not very many, and you'll find out why in a moment. But there's pictures of me and, and him, and, and it looks like in the beginning when I was born, I was his buddy. I see a great big smile. It looked like he was so happy to have me. There he is holding me. Yep, like two peas in a pot right there. Father and his son, his firstborn son. When I look back though, I don't have very many memories of my father and that's because he was only there in my life for the first four years. And what I remember of those four years was very little. 
of, of my father except for arguing and yelling and my mother crying. And it's strange because I can recall memories and I must have been three years old of listening to the yelling and the screaming. But nonetheless, some short time after that, around my fourth or fifth birthday, my dad was gone. I was around this age right here and that's me and there's really no other pictures with my father in them a lot. And this is because my father did in fact leave. He left the family because we weren't enough. I wasn't enough for him. My mother wasn't enough. My father was interested in finding things that made him feel worth in this life. He had multiple affairs. As a matter of fact, from what I understood, there is a possibility that I have a half sister out there somewhere. Around, from around this time, she would be my age. I don't know, I've never met her. But my father was more interested in chasing skirts and chasing tail than his little buddy here, right? Or the beautiful woman that he married. So my mom, then wife number two, who he divorced from before I was out of high school, and then wife number three, who he divorced 10 years later, and then my father was on wife number four before he died. And by the time my dad was on his fourth wife, I was already a grown man. And it was during this time that we got together and we had heart-to-heart -heart talks. There was a couple of things during the heart-to-heart -heart talks that he was able to tell me that really gave me a different perspective. Number one, I remember this, and I'm remembering this right now after he poured me a glass of whiskey and he lit a cigar for me. I remember he had almost water in his eyes and he said, I don't deserve this. And now mind you, I wasn't there to be judgmental. I was there like I always was growing up. A young kid looking forward to spending time with my dad. I didn't care. And at this time, I, I, that he was narcissistic, I, I didn't, I still had that trauma bond where I needed him. But he was teary-eyed saying, I don't deserve this, talking about himself. And what I think he means is that he didn't deserve to be there in a moment with the son that wanted to be with him. So that's the first thing that really stands out to me about this conversation, him saying, I don't deserve this moment right now. And as we were talking, and I was sharing him what I do with the Royal We, again, this was only about two and a half years ago. And I was still in the process of understanding the nature of my own father. But while we were chatting, I could tell he was proud of me in a way. But one of the things he said was, Kevin, and this is the most important thing for you to understand. He said, Kevin, I never knew myself. I never knew myself. And this is what I would say would be the narcissist's last words before dying. I never knew myself. And this is profound because this now gives us an understanding as to why they run from relationship to relationship, from career to career, from thing to thing, because they never know themselves and they require these outside things to constantly tell them who they are. But people might say, but that doesn't make sense. Why can't they find that in one relationship? Because in a st stable relationship, at some point, the other person no longer tells you that you're fun to be around all the time. The other person or the wife no longer tells you that you're just amazing all the time. Stable relationships require you to know who you are so you fit in that role and you stay because you're committed to who you are in the relationship. So for those of you who are parents, you stay a father with your children because you know who you are, not because they make you feel good or they even tell you you're a good father. You're a father because you know that that's who you are and that's your responsibility. My father didn't have that. Sure, he had a son, and I have a brother, he had another son. But when he looked at us, he never looked at us saying, I am a father and I'm going to be here and I'm gonna be stable and I'm going to do this. 
it was, I'm a father, but if they don't want a relationship with me, well, I mean, so what if they're only five or six and can't really articulate that? You know, maybe one day they'll need me, which again goes into that territory of people not knowing who they are and needing others, even children, to affirm and tell them who they are in life. Not only was my father in and out of relationships, he was on wife number four when he died, he was in and out of careers. The same principle. Stability in a, in a career ultimately requires that you know who you are and you know what you're doing there and you know why you're there. And I wake up every morning now. I found it later in life. I'm not perfect. I can say with, with 100% certainty that I didn't know who I was up until probably five years ago. I think many of us, if we're honest, don't know who we are. I'm just now discovering who I am and I wake up and I do this, what I'm sharing with you right now, out of who I am and I'm committed to it. Not because it always feels good, not because you're telling me who I am, not because I'm getting outside affirmation, but because I wanna share something from who I am. This is what it looks like when you start to know who you are and you accept it. So the profound message here is that narcissists last dying words, last words before dying is, would sound like this, I never knew who I was. And as a result, I had to try to find it from as many different places and as many different people as possible. I'm not telling you it feels good and I'm not telling you to have compassion on them and I'm not telling you to not distance yourself from them. I'm just telling you it is what it is. The best thing that you could do for your life is to learn who you are. Be the opposite of the narcissist. Be stable. Be committed, discover yourself, and do your thing, all right? Listen, I'll be here for, for your support. Actually, I'll be here to support you. Down in the description box, you'll find access for one-on-one -on -one appointments with me. In addition to that, brand new life coaching program every day, Monday through Friday, with questions and answers, all kinds of good stuff. Head on down there and get enrolled. This week, we're talking about beating the feeling of loneliness. Until I'm back with another video, watch this video right here. This video is recommended by the YouTube algorithm. I think it's gonna be a good video for you to watch. Check it out. And I'll be back with more videos for you right here on The Royal Way. Watch this video.